Hello, I'm a baby boomer. This is my chair. It's pretty comfortable. So, the older you get, the more changes you see in the language. Awesome. Awesome used to mean inspiring dread, veneration, and wonder. Now it means, that's nice, or okay. Credit or debit? Credit. Awesome. Oddly, I don't mind awesome. I've always liked valley speak because of the hyperbole. And in case you've forgotten the meaning of hyperbole, it means exaggeration. Do you remember gag me with a spoon? I know they don't say it anymore, but they should. Gag me with a spoon. It's awesome hyperbole. I was at a deli the other day and I heard this young woman talking to her friend. She had opened up her sandwich and she said, they hardly put any spread on this. And her friend said, well, just tell them. They would totally add some. Totally add some. It's awesome hyperbole. My brother thinks the word tweak is an abomination. So naturally, I enjoy tormenting him with it. Hey, Sammy, have you gotten around to tweaking that project of yours yet? Just a little tweak here, tweak there, here, tweak, there, tweak, everywhere, tweak, tweak. He goes, no. That's fun. Actually, I think tweak could be the perfect euphemism for a particular obscenity. Hey, drive it, lady. Tweak off, you tweaking road hog. Huh? Then there is like. I have no objection to the littering of sentences with the word like, as long as like has a meaning. And like often does have a meaning. For example, my teacher is like, Stacy, get to class on time. And I'm like, I'm trying. Here, like means to say. Or, hey, Stacy, what time is it? Uh, it's like 11.30. Here, Stacy is not certain of the time. She is approximating. But, hey, Stacy, what time is it? Uh, it's like 11.23. Is it like 11.23? Or is it actually 11.23? I'm guessing it's actually 11.23. Or, hey, Stacy, you want to come over tonight? Oh, I can't. I'm like going to a concert. Like going to a concert. So what is Stacy going to do? Is she going to go to the concert and just stand outside the concert hall and pick up the reverb through her feet? See, this is the use of like that I don't like. But the word that I especially abhor and I can hardly bring myself to say it, is issue. Issue. Even the most current, up-to-date, Merriam-Webster online dictionary agrees with me that issue means a matter of dispute between two or more parties. A matter of dispute between two or more parties. I have a pain in my fourth toe. I do not have a fourth toe issue. I have a fourth toe pain, or you could call it a fourth toe problem. It would only be a fourth toe issue if I went to my doctor and I said, oh, I've got this pain in my fourth toe. And my doctor said, no, you don't. There is no such thing as fourth toe pain. Here's the evidence. And he pushes a journal article at me. And I give him my evidence. I shove my swollen toe in his face. That would be a fourth toe issue. This use of the word issue emerged, I think, I don't know, 20 years ago, along with the expression differently abled. Someone, and I love to know who, decided that perfectly useful words like pain and problem we're just too negative. 
And so we got issue. Gag me with a spoon. Everybody uses it this way. News commentators, war correspondents, President Obama. I take a magazine called The Week, and it reported that Justin Bieber collapsed on stage with breathing issues. So what happened? Did Justin fling himself down on the stage floor in a tantrum because a bunch of people in the audience rose up and said, Justin, you are taking too many breaths. And he said, I am not. But no, sorry, it was breathing issues, plural. So maybe another group of the audience rose up and yelled, Justin, you're not breathing seductively enough. And he said, I am too and flung himself down on the floor with breathing issues. I like totally hate that word. Well, that's all I got today. See you next time.